I think it's really awesome to like give kids that power to start experimenting with money and not just in a like app where you're pretending to spend money and getting pretend items, but spending actual money and getting actual returns on those. Hi, and welcome to Beyond the Paycheck. I'm Paula Christine. So one of the things that I struggled with when I was raising my children was how to talk to them about money and teach them to be responsible as, as young children and even as they grew into teenagers with their first job and now today as young adults still even talking to that money, mostly because I'm their mother and they don't listen to me. So today we're joined by Mari Collins-Harris, who her goal in life is to teach children about money. So welcome, Mari. Hi, thanks for having me on. You're welcome. So tell me a little bit about yourself and how you got started in financial literacy for children. Yeah, so my name is Mari Collins Harris, and I run a company with my husband. It's called Ketchup. And our goal with Ketchup is to try and help families be better at managing money and teaching kids kind of the financial basics of save, spend, give, but put the power into their hands. So it's the kids making the shopping and the saving and the donation decisions for themselves rather than a parent kind of overseeing everything. But how do you even start that in introducing to your kids with money? I mean, what age do you recommend getting started and how do you do that? I mean, how do you even talk to them? Yeah, well, it's tricky because the way money works is changing. Like when I was growing up, it was a piggy bank and, you know, the tooth fairy money, which, you know, we still do with our younger children. I have three kids and my youngest is almost four. So we still do, you know, some physical money, but more and more of our transactions are online these days. And so our kids see us spending spending money that you don't actually see money going from me to the vendor. So one of the reasons we started Ketchup was to try and give kids the opportunity to understand that like money is limited. And so part of that is, you know, you can give them little bits of money, but you can also, you know, help them see, okay, you have $5, you can buy anything that's $5 or less. And so seeing it on a screen is different than holding it in your hands, but Mm -hmm. it's, it's another skill that kids do need to learn and preferably at an earlier age so that they aren't suddenly 13 and get a credit card and (laughs) go wild. So what is the youngest age that you would start talking to someone, a child about money? I think you can talk to kids about money younger than our target demographic. Like we started talking to our kids around age three about money. And that's just like, oh, here's a dollar. Like you can buy this thing at a garage sale or you want to buy a cookie, like giving the child money so that they are doing that exchange themselves. And -hmm. I think physical money for a very young child is the best way because they can't process these abstract ideas of like a bank account somewhere else. So I think, you know, these smaller steps when they're very young are super helpful and prime them to be more conscientious spenders later in life. Well, I do notice that when you talk about money, you do have this app that you work with with kids, but you also recommend some different types of games and things that can make it fun to teach children about money. Talk a little bit more about that. Yeah, so there's a lot of different ways to make money fun. I think one of the best things that you can do for kids is to give them power over their money. And so, you know, a lot of times people have their save, spend, give jars. That's been around for a long time where you put away money for certain things. We have something similar within our app that allows kids to do the save, spend, give. But I think it's really awesome to like give kids that power to start experimenting with money and not just in a like app where you're pretending to spend money and getting pretend items, but spending actual money and getting actual returns on those. So one of the things we like to do in our family is we set goals and that might be, you know, a new Lego set you want to buy, or it might be uh, donating to a charity or going on a family trip and allowing our kids to help contribute to those things that are going to benefit the whole family really helps them take take into account like what does money do for us you know like i i will plan vacations and i let my kids weigh in i'll narrow it down to like maybe two 
rental houses that we might stay at. And it's like, okay, mm-hmm. this one is X amount of money and we'll do, we'll be just fine. This one's a little bit more money and it has a hot tub. If you guys want to do the hot tub one, you need to come up with the 50 extra dollars it'll take to get the hot tub. Oh, house. that's cool. Yeah. And so then they're thinking like, okay, when we go on this trip, do I want a hot tub or would I rather have 50 bucks? And so, you know, I think I'd rather have 50 bucks. Yeah. I think I'd rather have the $50, but I'm not a kid. (laughs) Yeah, I know. I'm like, I I could pass on the hot tub, but especially if there's three kids in it already, I'm like, yeah, no thanks. Yeah. Always avoid the hot tub when there's kids in there. Oh, yeah. (laughs) Yeah. I'm like, I like to be in a hot tub all by myself and that's it. With a glass of wine. With a glass of wine. Yeah. And quiet. So one thing I heard you you say that is you encourage your kids to donate. Yeah. So there's a lot of different ways kids can donate through Ketchup. It could be an established foundation like a World Wildlife Fund or Doctors Beyond Borders, something like that. Or you could create your own fund, which might be like, oh, Aunt Susie broke her leg and needs help with the medical bills. So we'll donate towards that fund. Kind of like that's a really cool. fund me. Yeah. Yeah, that's really nice. And our kids spent some of their own money to donate to their school's annual fundraiser, which I didn't ask them to do that. They just were like, oh, I really, you know, want to be one of the big donators in my class. So I'm going to put in, you know, 10, 15, 20 dollars to my school fundraiser. I was like, oh, bravo. I'll match that for sure and double it. So that's a great idea to match. That's a better incentive, too, for them to donate when you put in that match. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And so just seeing the joy on their faces and, you know, being able to celebrate them and say, you know, my kid is doing great. I'm going to brag about it to all my friends and on social media and always in front of them so that they like hear and see that these uh, gifts that they're giving are appreciated. So how do you handle like when they make a mistake or regret doing spending or how do you handle that? How do you, I mean, there has to be some learning moments in there. Yeah. I love it. It's my favorite part because it is their responsibility to make those decisions and it is their consequence that they face. And so before we were using ketchup and giving kids the ability to make these purchases themselves, it would be like, mom, can I have this mom? Can I have that? Can I have it? Can I have it? And I would say, no, 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 no. And then finally, when I say yes, if I didn't make the right decision and I didn't do my homework and the thing breaks because it's cheaply made, then it's my fault somehow for saying yes. But when it's up to them, they are in charge of making those decisions and deciding like, is this a good enough product? Is it well-priced? Is it well-made? And so when that thing breaks, it is like, obviously they're sad, but it's an opportunity for me as a parent to come in and say, Hey, Like, what went wrong? Oh, the battery broke. Okay, let's look at how it's made. Hmm. Okay, so let's look at some other things that you might be interested in and see if those have the same problem. And so they'll go through and say, like, oh, this uses the same type of battery that broke. I'm not going to buy that. I'm not going to buy this. And so it's an opportunity for the child not just to, like, deal with that sense of disappointment on a small scale, but also to like learn how to be a smarter shopper and buy things of quality. So do you find they take care of that thing that they bought that toy a little bit better than had you or someone else gave that to them? For sure. A hundred percent. I know raising, raising five kids, you know, you, the worst thing is like you'd buy them a present or you'd buy something that they wanted and then you find it hanging in the closet, you know, six months later with the price tag still on it or, Uh. or they break it. And, you know, in 10 minutes, like they didn't seem to have that, that respect for that item. Yeah. Respecting items is huge. I'm kind of, uh, vicious when it comes to clutter around my house and I have what I call a go away bag. And if things are just left out and I kind of lose my mind, I just throw everything in the bag. It sits in the garage for three days and then it goes to the thrift store after that. Oh, Wow. Yeah, I know. I'm I'm terrible, but if, if <laughs> they respect <laughs> their if they respect their stuff, then they put it away. And You're I correct. found that the things that they buy for themselves aren't the things that they lose or leave out in the rain or break. One of my favorite purchases that one of my children made was 
a new set of mittens. And it was like, we live in a cold climate and you have to bring mittens to school in the winter every day. And it was like every three days we were replacing a set of mittens because they'd be lost. And pretty soon he's wearing like one of each, like two left hand mittens. And so I'm like, you know what? I'm done. I don't care that this is a necessity. You have to buy it for yourself because I'm I'm finished buying you like 70 pairs of mittens in a year. So he <laughs> bought himself a pair of mittens and they weren't what I expected. They weren't like navy or black. They were like tie dye swirl. We have them to this day. It's been two years since he bought those mittens and he brings them home with him every day, like puts them in the little cubby and it's wonderful to see him like learning to care for his stuff. And I think it's because yeah. he spent his own money on it. Yeah. I should have met you th- when I say my son was 24, maybe 30 some years ago. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. 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 I, I yeah. don't think I would have had much insight back then though. You know, it's, it's funny because when I think about my kids and money and things have totally changed, like, when my oldest, who's now 34, got his first checking account, or not even a checking account, it was the only way that he was getting, the his employer was paying him, was through direct deposit. So he had mm-hmm. to get an account, and then they gave him a debit card. And, you know, I'm like, well, you got to watch that, you know. And he'd like, but mom, look, the balance says. I'm like, but that's not what your balance really is, you know. And just watching him try to figure that out. I bailed him out the first time he got over overdrafted. I said, but I'm not doing it the second time. You're going to have to figure out how to manage this. And, Mm -hmm. you know, realistically, nobody, and my fault, I guess, but I tried to to tell him, but it's like understanding how that all works. Just because your balance is this does not mean that that's what's in your account. If you you just went and spent $15, if you you just went and spent $15. Do it again? Oh yeah, no, he paid. Yeah, he paid. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) He paid quite a, a couple of times. He just... To this day, he manages his money very well, but it was just, you know, he was 18 and just trying to figure it out. And of course, the hardest thing I think about kids and money is, is that they just don't necessarily look to their parents sometimes as, and especially me as somebody who works in finance that you would, Mm -hmm. you'd think you'd listen to me, but they don't. But you are, you are the mom. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. I'm well, up. that's that's one of our goals is to tap into those kids younger, because by the time they're 18 or even like 13, to be honest, they kind of start tuning out the parent and they're turning more towards those towards their peers. But there is this magic space, which my children currently occupy, which is like up to like, I'd say six to 12 and in that range, they're still very much, you know, reliant and somewhat listening to parents. And so being able to impart, you know, the money habits and money skills at that age helps set them up to be better when they're older. I yeah, think a you, lot of times you, we wait too long. Oh, I agree. Do you talk to your kids about investing? Yeah. Yeah. We've talked a little bit about it. I haven't started tapping into investments quite yet, but I do know there are some apps out there for slightly older kids that focus on, you know, micro investments for children. So I think that's a great way to lead into like growing your wealth. So how does someone find your app? You can find us online. We are at Ketchup dot com k-e-t-s-h-o-p so there's lots of uh good stuff in there read more about our family business or sign up for an account and then you can follow us online on instagram at ketchup dot app as well yeah i went and read some of your articles they're very well written i was i was impressed thank you what what you are putting out there. thank you some great stuff it has been such a pleasure to meet you yeah, I'm excited thank you so about what you're doing. Me. You're welcome. Yeah, thank you. So if anybody wants to get a hold of me, you can reach me at Paula at PaulaChristine.com or you can check out my website at Paula Christine. Again, thank you very much for joining us.